Hi, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard oh, Bird Center. Uh, this past week, the hummingbirds have really started to roll in, and people are getting reports and getting a lot of questions about uh, hummingbirds. And one of the, the most common asked questions for, about hummingbirds are, are hummingbirds really that mean? They, they, they're so, they chase each other, and they seem to be fighting all the time. So uh, mm -hmm. we're going to tie in uh, the answer to that question with their, 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 mate, their mating system, because they're not really mean. They are just aggressive and territorial. Um, and how you attract them and what you hope to happen, have, because most people want the hummingbirds in their yard all summer long. But the most, for most of us, we see them now in the early spring. They get here. Uh, we see them. We get all excited, and all of a sudden, they're not there anymore. So those things are tied, all tied together. So that's uh, the program for today. Um, the, the hummingbirds have a mating system called resource defense polygyny. Big word. You can win trivial pursuit with that one if, you, if they ever ask you. Um, uh, resource defense means that they find, as males find, a real good dependable source of food that the females would find attractive. And they defend it. And they attract many mates. Uh, polygyny is poly, means many, and mates. So what they do, what you're going to try to do this time of year is you can put your hummingbird feeder out and keep it fresh. You know, four parts water to one part sugar. Change it every two to three days. Make sure that sugar water is good and fresh. And they will defend that, that resource. Obviously, another male ruby-throated hummingbird comes along. They're going to chase him away. Boy, no other males anywhere close to his food source. He, he's going to defend that. And, yes, in that sense, they're aggressive, and they, they, they don't want another bird or territory. But that's no different than a cardinal or any other bird. Um, and what they're hoping is for those females to come along and to see this food resource, and he'll chase her away and say, oh, yes, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a good provider. I have this great food resource for you. And it can be a nice bush, flowering bush. Uh, hopefully it's your hummingbird feeder that you keep it nice and fresh. And what happens is that female agrees uh, to mate with him, and he's all happy. And um, then another female comes along, and he chases her around, and, and then he, she agrees to mate with him, and he'll let her eat a little bit. Uh, and those females will go off nearby. And here's the other part of getting the key to getting them in your yard all summer long. That female has to believe that the habitat around you is good enough to her, for her to make a nest and raise her babies. They love streams. If you have water, you've got a good advantage in getting humming, female hummingbirds to nest nearby. Uh, the, if you don't, it's a little more challenging. But that male is uh, dependent on, one, his food resource to be attractive to her to feed, and also your yard, uh, or close to your yard, to be attractive for her to select it as a nesting site. Um, that we, we know that feed the male hummingbird sometimes, I mean, usually it's two or three females that he may have uh, around there, but uh, up a harem of up to nine females has been recorded with ruby-threaded hummingbirds. So the, the other part of their society that... Uh, may not be as attractive or appealing to some people is that he does nothing else. He Once he mates with the female, the female does 100% of the rest of the work. She goes out, builds the nest, lays the eggs, incubates the eggs, hatches the babies, feeds the babies, raises the babies, and they fledge. He has, does not feed her any food when she's on the nest. He doesn't feed the babies any food when they're on the nest. His job is strictly reproduction. So, uh, for, you know, a male ruby throat a hummingbird has a pretty good life there. Uh, and your, your hummingbird feeders are uh, making it a little easier for uh, that male to succeed in the world, which is good. So, remember, a good dependable food resource is a good clean resource. Four parts water to one part sugar, a feeder that's easy to clean, to keep it fresh, and keep it out there, you know, dependably for them. And if that female doesn't choose your nest, your site, your, your yard to nest in, and she disappears and he has to disappear, it's awfully hard to, to keep yourself changing that nectar after he disappears. So in the month of June and, and in July, that gets to be hard to do. So a lot of people will take their hummingbird feeders down um, if they're not getting those males or females to come anymore by, say, the end of May. And uh, here's a couple things you can do if that's the case. You take that hummingbird feeder down, empty it, and hang it out empty. We'd rather a hummingbird come along to a hummingbird feeder that is empty, and he'll just think, oh, this flower has no nectar, 
instead of not changing your nectar and letting the nectar go bad in that hummingbird feeder and then that, that uh, uh, hummingbird come along and, and get bad nectar. So if you do decide not to feed hummingbirds in June and July, remember at the end of July is when the babies are out and even migration starts to take place. And we have a whole other video on, on the Facebook page about uh, what to do in the, the later months for the hummingbird feeders. Good reminder uh, that uh, a lot of people always ask about using honey or artif any, in, uh, even artificial sweeteners to, to make sugar water for their hummingbirds. Absolutely not. No honey, no artificial sweeteners, just use plain sugar. Um, we've got you know, sugar, water, sugar mixtures here that you can use, and we have pre-made mixtures. Uh, don't use chemical dyes to color your, feed, your, your, your hummingbird uh, nectar. I've never seen a hummingbird go up to a feeder and put his eye down to the hole to see what color the nectar is inside. They don't care. That feeder is what attracts them to stick their bill to it and, and drink from it, so they don't know what color the, the, the sugar water is. So clear is just fine. So if you like the videos, please share them. Uh, send in ideas for future episodes. And until then, come by and let's talk birds. Two, one. Would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.